Hi everybody, Melissa here from Happy Trees. Happy Saturday night. Quarantine week, we have no idea anymore. Um, this is the first night that we're gonna instruct a couples tutorial. So I've had these kits for sale. Uh, you can get two canvases, two sets of brushes, enough paint for at least two canvases. Uh, I usually do a little extra. Uh, that's $60 right now. So um, if you guys want to purchase a kit, you can go to happytreespainting.com and there's a button that says paint from home kits. Uh, there's also a single option too. Um, you can see I usually have like a finished example of what I'm painting, but this is taking up so much room. So I'm going to paint both of these tonight. Uh, I think there are some people that are going to be painting along with us. Uh, if they don't make it live, I know they're at least going to rewatch the video. So always remember if you're trying to paint along with us live, there is a possibility that you may not be done exactly when I get done, but you can always go back and rewatch the videos. They'll stay up on Happy Trees Facebook for a long time, and then they'll get uploaded to our Happy Trees Painting YouTube channel. This is kind of a little mini example of kind of what we're shooting for here. We're going to go obviously on a much larger scale. And the idea is that one person paints this side and the other person paints this side. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be doing both of these, so I'll give you some some tips about if, if you're two different people painting this, just how to make sure you don't have two different colored greens and you want it to kind of come together seamlessly. Or you can go rogue and choose your, choose your own adventure too. So uh, I'm just going to have this kind of sitting over here. I've taught this a few times. Usually when I do this uh, in a class, I use two 11 by 14 canvases, but the kits I offer right now are 16 by 20s. So I've never painted this exact picture on this scale before, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work. So uh, let's go in and of course, pause my washcloth. Okay, so let's see what we're working with here. I've got a paint palette here. It's got the primary colors, and then I've got black, brown, plenty of white here. I had to remember that I'm gonna have to cover two canvases, so if I need to stop and get extra paint, I will do that. I also have a clean paper plate here if you need room for mixing your colors. This is helpful to have. I've got a washcloth, paint rag, paper towels work too. I've got a cup of water here, and then I use three brushes, so with the kit, you're going to have a big brush, a medium brush, and a small brush. This green one here looks a little bit different than the ones in the kit, but I'm at home and I'm working with what I got, and it's pretty similar. So I've um, got these three brushes, and to start this picture, what I want to do is we'll just go in with this tiny brush. And all I want to do is just kind of sketch in the Nelson. And the idea of this painting is that there's perspective going on. So one of the shuttlecocks is gonna be really big over here on this side for the Nelson Lawn. We want the building to be pretty far in the background and I'm not trying to have it be super complicated. We don't have to nail all the crown molding on the building. We just wanna kinda of have uh, that shape back there. So I would start by going in and just taking this smallest brush that you have and I'm just going to roll it around and this brown paint here. So I just want to get a little bit of paint on here. It doesn't take much. And then I'm going to take my brush, just get a little bit of water on there. So I just dip my brush in the water and you can see I'm just kind of mixing up a little bit of paint and water here for the side. I'm about to lose my white paint here. All right. So I would go in, find like the center of your canvas. It's a pretty good bet. And go ahead and just make, let's just do like a line across. So just get a little bit like that. I'm going to get a little bit more paint, a little bit more water. Now, as far as like a good measurement, if you found the uh, center of your canvas, each person can go in and kind of do four finger spaces. That'll give you about an ish about how wide to make that. And let's go ahead and just kind of complete this little shape here. So you can see I'm being kind of, I don't care about what my outline looks like very much right now. I'm just trying to get the shape of the building. in. As far as how high up to go, I would go about four fingers high. So really what we're doing is we're just making a triangle. I'm going to get a little bit more. This tiny brush, 
is good for if you're going in and you're just trying to sketch out some shapes. And again, we're gonna fill all that in. So you can see my lines are kind of sloppy right now and that's okay. All right, let's get another. So let's say on top of this, this rectangle that we've got here, we're just gonna come in and do another little rectangle on the top. So as far as a measurement on that, it's about as wide as my pinky. And so we've got rectangle, much skinnier, longer rectangle sitting on top. Now I would come in and we're gonna add a couple little rectangles off to the side here. And I'm just trying to use easy measurements that will work, get the point across. So let's go in, let's do another, let's go about halfway down on each side here. And I'm gonna go about four, four finger spaces over. And we'll just go ahead Measurement in there. All right, so that's pretty good. Now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna go in, let's do some, we've got all these stairs out here in the front of the Nelson. So maybe what I'll do is just come in, this is about halfway um, in each of these little squares, if you separate that, like halfway through, halfway through. It's going to be probably the hardest part with this is to not worry about your lines right now. So you'll have a tendency sometimes to really want to make those lines perfect. And we just don't need to do that right now. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some other little stairs and each, I'm just gonna do a few of these. We're really simplifying this, this shape here. That's okay. All right. Now what I wanna do is just kinda go in. Now where these stairs are here and kind of along this edge, we're gonna have a little foliage coming up here. So what I wanna do is right on top of this stair, I'm gonna come in, maybe leave about a pinky space kind of all the way around, but I'm gonna do another little square inside of our original square. And of course you can always ask questions if you if you need to, um, I'm also available if you guys want to do a little Facebook chat after you've tried your painting. If you've got some questions still, I can always take a look at that and see. All right. That's a lot of, a lot of rectangles there. So now what I'm going to do is come in, go ahead and put this brush back in the water. And I'm going to go in for that medium brush. Okay, so let's go in and we're going to mix a color now. So I've got my medium brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint. Maybe a little bit more. And I'm just going to add a tiny touch. So I just pick up a little bit of brown on the end. Just a little white and brown, so like a tan color. Now, I don't need a ton of paint on my brush. I just wanna get, you can see I just have a little bit here and I pick up a little bit of water. You can kind of mix that in. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brush and I'm just gonna go in and start to fill this in. Now, this is when you can kind of go in. Now this brown paint that I did for an outline is still kind of wet, but if you let your paintbrush just kind of run into it, you'll get some nice little shadows kind of around the, around the edge. I'm 
just going to go in and fill in this color. Okay. Now, if you need to mix up with more paint, just follow the same recipe. You get a slightly different shade, it's okay. Now, if the two of you working together, let's say one person has a much darker tan than the other, what you can do is just have a designated person that just skips right in between. So you can make sure that where your two canvases come together, you have the same shade. Or maybe one person mixes up one color and both person uses that. So that's another way that you can get the same shade when it's two different people mixing the colors. Inevitably, you're going to get some variation, and that is a good thing. And that's part of the fun of painting with a partner. And you can see down here, my I've got a little bit more brown paint by the stairs, but I'm just kind of letting it, letting it work it. Now you can see now as I'm doing this, my lines are starting to clean up because I'm able to kind of get them kind of blended, but yet I don't want them to totally go away. All right, a little bit more. I'm just going to use that same color. And down here on these stairs. And again, you should just get some kind of natural shadows. A lot of what we're doing is going to be kind of skipping around. Okay, that's pretty good. Remember, there's going to be trees and little bushy things covering up all along this bottom part here. So if you've got some roughness happening, don't worry about it. Right in here, what I like to do, and I'm not even, I don't have to rinse my brush. I've got this light tan on it. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to just pick up a little bit of brown and just a little bit of black, and I'm mixing those two colors together. So there's a little bit of that tan, and that's fine. It's just going to mix right in there. So we want just a really dark shadow color. You could use plain black, but I think adding the brown to it just opens it up a little bit. Now what we're going to do right in this box here is this is going to just be really dark. Now if you're putting these two canvases together sometimes you want to go down in between there and it'll make it look a little bit more seamless. And again I'm just using this medium brush but you could also be using you could use your small brush if you wanted to go in and kind of cut in around these like smaller places, but. Okay. So I want to get this building in. And that way this kind of has some time to dry. And what we're doing is we put this shadow color here so that when we come back later it'll be really easy for us to go in with our small brush and just add some lighter columns on top of that and it'll it's a lot easier than drawing columns and trying to paint a shadow in between them so that looks pretty good you can always kind of go in with your finger and soften any little areas up that you might want to all right so i'm going to let this kind of chill now the thing i would caution you on for this next part is that this outline is still a little bit wet. And we wanna go in and we're gonna be working on the sky, which is kind of uh, light pinks and light blues. Um, so when you're coming down, just make sure if you've got wet brown paint here that you're really mindful of that when you're taking that lighter color because you don't wanna smear that up into your sky. So, cautionary tale for me to you. Let's take the big brush. And I just kind of tapped it on the cup, squeeze all that water out of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a pretty hefty scoop of white. 
and I'm just gonna put this in my little mixing plate here. Now, if you've seen any of these videos before, when you're mixing paint, I'm pretty dramatic. When it comes to like doing like a light pink, you know that red and white make pink. But for a light pink, you want white and you want, like this is the amount of red I have poured. I will probably use 1 50th of this red. I'm just gonna come in and just barely tippy toe in that red and you'll see what a drastic difference that makes. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this. We got a question out there. All right. Pertaining to the painting. Yes. Brad and I just got the outline of our building. What did you use to make the tan color? Uh, outside? It's just white with a little bit of brown. So it's just a little bit of tan. And I'm excited that you guys are painting. Yeah, that was Katie. Oh, yeah. I just delivered there. I don't know what day I did that. I did it this week. I know that. So they're filling in there. They're building. So again, I always tell people if if you aren't exactly where I am while I'm painting, the these videos are meant to kind of be able to re-reference them. And yeah, you can always ask me anything that you missed in real time. So I just added a little bit more white to that. And the reason is I want to show you guys you come in with your brush see how it's kind of marbled I don't have my paint mixed up all the way so when you go in and you're wanting to do a sky and I'm just looking for some some streaks and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some light pink all over the place and then we're gonna come in with some light blue and we're gonna do some streaks through there and then we're gonna come in with some white and kind of go in and get it to all blend together so a um, couple things, you know, I see people get kind of too much red in their, in their pink. There's no too much red. It could just be a, a darker pink sky. That works too. But again, if you want to keep it light, just tiny, tiny touch of red. And the other thing is when you're going in here to do your streaks, you've got to keep it moving. So a lot of times I see people come in and they stay in one spot. And what you need to do is go in and more so be like all over. Now my paints, my brush is running out of paint and that's okay, but I can come back in and get a little bit more paint on my brush, get a little bit more water. Peppermint skies. Peppermint skies. Who said that? Did you say that? Yeah. All right. I never know when it's you or... <laughs> okay. So as far as your sky, like how far to take it down... I would go down right about here. And I just keep getting a little bit more water, a little bit more white. But you can see I'm leaving quite a bit of canvas. So you're not trying to cover this, you just really want to kind of dance all around and get some of this light pink color. Now these are new brushes that I'm using. If you get a bristle that comes off and if that bothers you, you can just kind of come in and knock them off with a washcloth. All right. Hope Brad and Katie are doing all right. Let's see. So I mentioned we want to do the light pink. I'm still on my, still on my big brush. Now I'm coming in and I'm just rinsing my brush. You can see I really knock it around in the bottom of the cup. Tap, tap, squeeze. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up a light blue. So we're going to scoop a little bit more. Just gonna scoop some white onto my plate. Now, the red was really, really strong and the blue is even stronger. So if you wanna make a light blue, just get a tiny, tiny touch on your brush. When you're mixing colors, you can always add more of the darker color. 
but if you mix your color too dark, don't try to add white to it to lighten it up because it won't work. So if that happens to you and you, you get some blue and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so much darker than I wanted, rinse your brush off. And what you can do is you can get a little bit of white and maybe, maybe put the white next to the color that you mixed too dark and you can kind of drag some of that into the white. I don't know if that made sense, but all right. So I'm getting a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, tiny, tiny touch. All right. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go in that same way, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and only trace where the white is, but I am going to kind of go a little bit quickly. And as I'm going, some of it overlaps the pink. And when that happens, you'll get kind of like a nice little lavender color. But again, we're still not trying to cover the entire canvas. We just want to go in and get some of this blue color on there. And I mentioned one of the last steps is going to be to come in with white kind of over the top of all this. So let's get some blue kind of streaking. All right. And again, I was kind of, I'm kind of not getting right up close to this right now. I'm sort of saving that for when I, when I come in with white and sort of bring all this together. Okay, so you've got some streaks. That doesn't look bad, but also it doesn't look super softer or blended. So the trick to getting this all to kind of blend and wisp together like a beautiful sky would do, we're gonna have to go in and take a little bit of white and we're just gonna kinda use that same brush stroke and sort of go over all of this. And you'll see it start to happen once we once we do it. Um, but again, you're going to want to really wash that brush off. Okay. And I'm going to take just a little bit of white and I just want to add a little bit of water to that white. So I'm just loading it all up here on my, okay. So I'm going to take this white and watch what happens when I kind of go in here. a layer of this white and you may have to reload your brush a few times and every time I do it now at this point I can kind of so I'm just kind of using this nice long long brush stroke you want for this paint to still be wet when you go in to do this if you let that paint dry, you will not get this effect. So remember that this is not working. See how if you just add that white right over it, it just kind of blends everything together. Now, of course, man, this is a really don't usually all shed that much. The other trick too, if you're having some blending issues, you can take your brush and just go kind of right along everything and get it to blend in. So you can see I've got this side mostly blended. I still have a little bit left over here. So now I'm trying to kind of mix up this light blue and at least get it get it close to my my building. The Nelson Atkins when I was little I used to pretend I lived that was my house. Okay, so I'm just going to get a little bit more here. Now, again, some areas not to really worry about that much. Everything right here in the horizon is going to get covered with our tree line. So don't worry about that. A lot of the stuff that Okay. 
Okay, a few little, a few little bristles in there. But again, sometimes this works really well to go in and just mix all that paint together. Soften that out just a little bit. Uh, one thing you can do or that's possible is to over blend. So as fun as it is to do this, at some point you have to know just when to, when to stop because you will just mix this all into like a, I guess if you had a solid lilac sky, that would be pretty too. All right. We got a check in from Brad and Katie yet? So the other thing I always caution people against too is when you're mixing up your paint and you're getting that paint on the canvas, we, we're always, for the most part, there's a few steps that we don't, but when we're trying to cover areas of the canvas, you want to have your paint kind of watered down so it's thinner, it'll dry a lot quicker, and if you start to get too much wet, kind of muddy thick paint on the canvas. I think because it takes longer to dry, it's just a lot harder to control. She so, says, things are rough. <laughs> well, again, we can have a little conference afterwards and we'll get you back on track. So uh, get your blow dryer out. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. If you have your blow dryer, then if you're running into issues, at least you can dry it really quick. And once it's really dry, then you can go in and kind of make corrections. But I'm excited to see what you guys have going on. I always love, this is my brother that I'm, this is my brother and sister-in-law that I'm talking to right now. If anyone else is watching, um, I always enjoy Brad's work on these. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Hang in there, Katie. We're, we're getting there. So for the next part. We just want to go in and we're just going to basically color all of this in green. And I'm going to keep it simple. Let's just get a shade of green. Again, if you're working as partners, you don't want one person to have a really yellow green and the other person to have a blue green. So try to be kind of consistent. Uh, it's a pretty easy recipe for the shade of green that I use here. And it's just kind of a, a scoop of yellow and maybe about the same amount of blue. So in this case, you can use a lot more blue. It'll give us this nice, you know that Nelson Lawn's always looking, looking green. She says they're having technical difficulties that they can't find the computer charger. Oh, okay. And they're scrambling around. Well, Again, you don't need to scramble because the video will be up and we can do a little one-off after this, too. Got a little bit of water. All right, so here's some green. And I've got quite a bit of this green on here now because, well, I've got to go in and fill both of these canvases in. If you're in this situation, then... And again, see how I'm just kind of sticking this brush right down in the middle. So you just kind of, if you can make sure that where this, where these meet is at least consistent. And I've got quite a bit of water mixed into my paint. Now I'm going to go right up here. And you can see I'm, we, the brushes that you guys have are flat brushes. So you can go just, if you put it on its side, you can get a pretty good, pretty good line. If you need to use your little brush to get in these little crevices here by the stairs, I get it. So for a minute, this is just gonna be a lot of green paint going on here. So what you're gonna see is I'm going to be reloading my brush, picking up water every time I reload it. So if you're painting, 
and your paint is not going on in this consistency, you probably need to add a little bit more water. Flip side to that is if you get too much water, it's gonna go on really thin and start to drip. So you'll figure it out. I'm gonna get a little bit more yellow. I'm picking up a little bit more. And a little bit of water. All right, let me just focus on this side over here. So even though there's like a little bit of a little bit of a gap right here, there's going to be a tree line that comes in and goes right down into here. So, and then the tree line is going to come here. So really, actually, you know what you could do? Uh, so what you could do is I'm gonna do it on this side because I've already painted this. You don't even have to paint this in green because we're gonna have another shadow color there. So you could just cut that step out. Um, the tree line is basically gonna go from this corner here. So if you see this, and I don't wanna take it all the way down to this corner. I just want it to go maybe like four finger spaces up from the bottom. So let's do like that. Okay, so another approach could be going in so you can leave this and I'm just painting a lot, a lot, a lot of green. Fill on the green, make it a little bit more, a little bit more paint. Now you can see like that's a little bit different shade, but it's all right. If you get a little different shade, just kind of move it around and let it blend in. Tell you what, losing the computer charger in these days is like, what will we do? And Brad says he's got his laptop going. All right. Back on track. So I want to get this green all down in here. Just how I wanted this to have time to dry. I want this to have time to dry because we're going to be painting our shuttlecock right on this. Still on that yellow and blue. Now, if you're painting along at home, you know, each of you will be doing a side of this canvas. So it may not be as labor intensive as what I'm doing over here. Now, I know that you kind of lost the tree line over here, but you'll see it when I put it back in and you can see over here how I should have done that over here, but. Learning as we go. This is the part where I get paint on the piano. So, just kind of ignore this little section here, and you can go ahead, once you get all that green on, you can rinse your brush off again real good. Barb says this is so soothing. All right. Swish, swish, swish. It is a nice, solid color, I, and it looks 
looks really big up there. It's two of them. It's pretty big. Yeah. I mean, my my painting arm is pretty well worked out, and that was giving me some burn there. So. Okay, so we want to let this dry. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and do a shadow layer for our trees. So we want to get this shadow layer in and we want that, it's going to be a pretty dark color, where we want that to dry. And so we're going to kind of skip around. We'll get the shadow layer in, we'll come back in and add some columns here. Then we can go back in and add some highlights to our trees. And then we'll come in kind of for the grand finale with the shuttlecock. And I'm hoping my green paint is going to be dry because I didn't bring my blow dryer downstairs. But I could always go get it. So my big brush is nice and rinsed off with much banging around in the bottom of the cup. The tree, I mean, you don't have to be delicate with these brushes. So... I like to use these because of their bushy nature. Just let them be bushy. All right, so I went and I squeezed. And now what I'm gonna do for the shadow layer of the trees is I'm gonna scoop, pretty good scoop of brown. And I'm gonna scoop about the same amount of blue. So, once you start mixing this brown and this blue together, you'll see that it starts to become this pretty dark color. Now this is gonna be a time when I'm gonna say, maybe don't add as much water to your brush. So what we wanna do is, you know, I'm gonna start over here. Let's just go in and I'm gonna make this, let's go. So I drew that here just to reinforce that that's where it's supposed to be. And I'll go in and I'll draw this shadow here. All right, so we know that that goes there. Let's go in and let's make our tree line. I'm putting my whole hand up, up here on this part. Maybe make your tree line come up to about here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in. See how I do this rough line here? I don't need that to be super solid. Let me do that on the other side. And, and there we go. So as long as you just have that shape, that's good. I'm going to mix up a little bit more paint. You can see that my white has compromised. I've got some more brown and I'm picking up some more blue. So I'm just mixing up more, more of that dark color. And this part's kind of fun. So you got your brush kind of loaded up with that dark paint. And what I want to do is I want to push it down on the canvas like this. And that's how I'm going to be going in and pushing it down to make our tree line. So. The tree line's going to follow this line, but it's also going to come in and do some little interesting, more like a tree line than this straight line. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of holding my brush. When I start, I kind of hold it on the corner here. And then as I'm going, I sort of turn the brush like this as I'm, it's the old stab and twist. So if you load your brush up bushy, what you can see is that your bristles are going to start to look like a tree line and it doesn't really matter you just don't want it to look too uniform so you can see some trees are going up a little further than others so I've got that top part of the tree line I'm gonna do this whole thing over here so you'll get another chance to see it now once I'm down here I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to that paint Barb's laughing out there oh yeah <laughs> No, I'm just, to fill this in, I'm going in and just really doing these big circular 
brush strokes. So I'm pushing that brush all the way down on the canvas and I'm also kind of turning it around. If you get all the paint off on this side, flip it over. The paint will get pushed to the other side. So I'm just going in, let's get a little bit more paint. She says the old trusty stab and twist. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it works every time. Except for I always, when we're in real, like, class situations, remember that? You always have to warn people to not do that too vigorously because then these tables start to shake. And Okay, so let's look at this side versus this side. So this pretty quickly starts to look like a tree line, and that's all just from doing these little bushy things up here. And little, not little, big circular brush strokes. And the only reason I like to do that brush stroke is maybe you can see it up close. So when we go in to highlight these trees, I think by doing these big billowy brush strokes here, it kind of helps you to see these little tree shapes in here. So when you're going in and making decisions of where to put highlights, I think that that's kind of helpful to have as a, those are the little happy accidents. I always slip and paint everything. That looks awesome, I say. All right. Now, I did say at some point, I may have to get, I'm going to have to get a little touch of, touch of brown. Let's take a moment to study. Mm -hmm. Katie and Brad will be happy to catch up. Let's see. Okay, I needed a little bit more brown. Yeah, these little palettes that I'm using are made for, like, a uh, painting. It doesn't really hold a ton of paint if you're trying to cover. But they Let's wash see, what off. is this? They uh, wash off real easy. What does? These? Yeah. They, it is amazing. The funnest part is letting the paint dry on these things, and then you just they peel so nicely. So try that out everybody that has a kit i'll give you yeah we got to give a tutorial on that some painting yeah class I'll, I'll save one the next time i could just do whole videos of peeling paint off of <laughs> whatever works these days okay so i'm gonna get just get a little bit more of this brown and blue make that noise bushy brush coming in let's do some tree lines Right in here. So again, uh, sometimes I see just like this, and that's like too uniform to me. Really have some, some come up, and really get up out of there. Ooh, paint peeling, yes. Yeah. That's what Barb says. It's it's pretty great. Like I didn't know how much I loved it until today. I was like. I got my canvas or my palette I used last time, and it's like, oh, it's peeling time. Although it doesn't take much these days for excitement. No, I can sound effects. All right, that's what I have to do. Okay, so I have this little top part. Let me get a little bit. Oh, guy up in here. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of water because I'm gonna come in now. Fill in. Again, big, big brush strokes. So I kind of get all the paint off one side. Not to say that you won't have to reload your brush. But you also don't need to have this really thick layer of paint here. You don't. You don't want that because you won't be able to get your your highlights. You would be able to get highlights. You just have to wait a long time for it to dry before you can do that. And if you put your paint on thin enough, like we're doing here, then you don't have to wait very long. Okay, so we got tree line here, tree line here. I'd like to add some little bushy type things right in front of here. So I'm just going to take that same brush. Maybe I'll come right in here and just give a little bit of a shadow for it to sit on. And 
just going to come in and do just a few little foliage type things right here in front. Maybe I'll have to do that a little bit more. And I'm going to do that same thing over here. Go in. All right, now what I'm doing right now is I don't have very much paint on my brush. I'm just kind of coming in and adding some little bushies. But this step is going to kind of go straight into the next step. So I don't have very much paint on my brush. I've gotten most of it off of my brush and onto the canvas. So I like to go in and you just, you got to make sure you don't have very much paint at all. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very, very lightly, so not a lot of paint and not a lot of pressure that you're going to push. So what you can do is just come right along here. And if I just run this brush, I'm going to write, it should just look like a little bit more of a, a little shadow there. Let me do that on this other side too. So I'm just... Just kind of blending out the tree line. I have just a tiny bit of, now this is what I'm, I'm calling this like the shadow color. I can also come in and just add a little bit of a shadow right here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this brush back in the water. Okay, so I can tell my green's gonna be, my green's still wet over here, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, at this point, the only thing that we really have left to do, we've got some columns in here. We've got the highlights on our trees and bushes. And then we'll come in and I'll just do a quick tutorial on at least how I paint an easy shuttlecock. So, all right, let's go. I'm trying to decide which brush. Let's do tiny brush just to be on the safe side. Melissa is so good at presentation, says Bryant Miller. Oh, thank you, Bryant. We need to get one of these days we'll be able to paint again. Bryant did the pirate ship for your yeah. birthday party. Those all turned out really good. Um, let's see. Let's do, we're going to do some columns in here. I'm going to just use the tiny brush. I'm not going to give you an amount of columns that you should strive to do. I don't know how many columns are on the actual Nelson, but I think you'll get like if you're from Kansas City and you see this picture, you'll know exactly what it is. All right, so we did white with some brown for this. And now I'm just going to come in. I'm going to use mostly just, I'm going to use white with like the tiniest touch of brown. Dang, see, that was even, it's the same color. What I'm trying for is I'm trying to get a lighter shade than what I used originally. So this is a good time to show you guys, if you mix your color too dark, earlier remember I said don't just add white straight to that color. What you can do, rinse that brush off. I'm just picking up a little bit of white and putting it next to that. And just sort of, there we go. So this color off to the side is more like what I want. And I just got my brush loaded up. And what I'm going to do is just go in and I'm just going to push. Let's see, maybe I'll start from the center. So I at least. All right. So see, I'm pushing. This is my tiny brush. But if you push it down all the way, you can get a pretty good, good line there. I'm not painting, but I'm watching and enjoying, says Sarah Beth. Hey, you're going to be painting soon, though. I hope. Let's see. Now I'm just kind of measuring on the other side here. Stay tuned for the trees. That's the real fun part. So again, I'm just kind of pulling that brush 
all the way down. Sometimes you might have to turn it over in the middle. And you've got this really dark background here. So if you don't do the perfect line that you want, you can always go back in with a shadow color and kind of clean it up. So I'm just going for it. All right, that looks like a good space here. Let's do like that. Oh, they don't hold a lot of paint, so you kind of have to constantly load it. It's almost like every time. So I'll probably do one here and then maybe one on the end. Edge. I need to mix up more paint. My ration, my paint ration is low. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. Make sure these stay vertical. If you start to get like, like this one looks, he's a little leany. If you start to get a leaner, it's fine, but just make sure you don't follow suit with the other ones. And I'll show you, I'll have an example to show you how to clean something up with a dark shadow. All right, let's get this guy on the end. But, you know, like I said, for those of us who so familiar with the Nelson that's pretty good okay so this guy I feel like let's make him kind of a problem child if you're like oh he's so fat and there's not enough space in between there super easy fix we just remember that was a that was just a brown and black combination so you can go in with the shadow color and just kind of cut in and straighten those up. Pretty good. Now, I'm gonna add columns to the bottom. That would be bugging me, except for I know that I've got another step. So you can do these vertical lines and I think they look pretty good just like that, but if you wanna go in and do more, you can just kind of come in and do a little horizontal dash at the bottom and top of those. But that was me dipping into the paint for the sound effect, folks. Again, I mean, I'm just trying to get just the impression of these being columns back here. I'm not trying to make it super, super perfect, but that's how I do it. You can always take a lot more time with yours. I'm just impatient. Even before I started doing painting classes, I... I just paint for fun, and I typically never spent more than three hours on anything, so. But everybody's different. All right. That looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to come in and still this one little spot here. I'm going to have to put it above that. All right, the tree line should be pretty dry now, and I'm gonna go back to my big brush. Oh, I need more yellow. Okay, okay I'm getting tired. So everybody say thank you to my cameraman here. I'm just, I got way more yellow just now than I, should have I just wasn't paying attention but that's okay um that'll be fun to peel tomorrow all right tap tap so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up 
tiny touch of yellow paint on the end of my brush. And I'm just going to kind of revisit a spot. This spot's pretty dry here. So I'm going to go in and I'm just kind of loading my brush up bushy. So I've got a little bit of paint. It's kind of evenly distributed throughout the brush. And I kind of talked earlier about how when you're when you're going to put your highlights on here, you want to kind of be thinking about this is basically representative of light. So where is the light hitting these leaves? Um, how much do we need to highlight to get a point across? So I usually start at the tops because you know that the light's going to hit the top. So if you just come in and see how I'm just kind of doing this little, now I'm going to kind of come down so you know I've got the top, but maybe like this is a tree right here. And so I'm kind of just skipping around and I'm just putting a little bit of that, that yellow color. And you can even come in and maybe there's like another little, like maybe there's little bushy things down in here. But all I'm doing is using some yellow paint. And see how I kind of left a little shadow right in there? So that's going to make this plant look like it's in front of that one. So let's keep going. I'm an instant gratification creative type person too, says Barb. Yeah. I mean, I know some people like to really take time. And I have an appreciation for people that do that. I just too much like a squirrel so let's see something shiny uh, so you can see what's happening on my brushes it's almost like I'm picking up that color underneath it and getting a little bit of that shadow color you may need to stop and rinse your brush at some point if you're picking up too much of that dark color see how I'm just kind of going in you want to leave some of that shadow um, we just finished the grass. I think you did the trees after that. What did you do to make that dark green? That is like a 50-50 of brown and blue. Oh, Bar Barb had the answer out there. Oh, she's... It was brown and blue, she says. <laughs> <laughs> Barb's ace in the pop quiz, everybody. I love it. Is Kate watching? Kate's probably sleeping. Okay, so you can see... You can go from just shadows to something like this. Now, if you over high, let's see, I'll do a, Barb's on here, we'll do another cautionary tale. So let's pretend like you get real crazy and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's not like. That looks pretty cool on here. Yeah, it's not terrible. Um, if you're here in real life, it looks a little bit more intense than we would want. But let's say you overdo your your yellow you can come in with a little bit of that shadow color and you can always go back in and kind of soften it up so let's go over to this one and if you missed the little highlights wow i'm gonna do it again let me fall off my piano oh, bench Shaky guy, shaky camera. <laughs> shaky camera time of night. All right. So, um, yellow brush, not a lot of paint. And I'm not adding water at this point, so that's important too. So, I just want to kind of come in. Too much paint on my brush. So I'm just kind of, you can see how you can make certain trees stand out. And again, if you just leave a little bit of shadow in between some of those layers, that looks good to do. You can see I'm kind of, my brush is kind of going in these little, almost like arches. Don't make them too uniform. It's got to have that random chaos or ordered chaos maybe that's what I meant to say all right so you can see lots of foliage in here and I'm also going to come in 
If you want to use your smaller brush for these little guys in here with a little bit of yellow, that's cool too. But you just go in and light those guys up. Okay, cool. All right, so I think that's pretty good for like the lawn itself. And I'm just gonna do a little tutorial on the shuttlecock. Barbara, you have any glass of wine? Cheers to you. Yeah. Katie, Brad. They just asked, how is the best method to make it look tree-ish? Let's see. I'm going to use the back of my plate here. Stab and twist is the answer. That's right. Barb's got the answer. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got your, let's see. Did you draw the triangle yet? I know there's like a little delay. Now, what I did first was I went in and I drew like the triangle perspective of it. And so once you have that in here at the top, let's do that. Okay. So this is something like our, our tree line here. Ah, I have to load it up over here. I'm gonna put it back. And then you just come in. I'm using like the corner part of my brush. And you just come in and so yep I'm stabbing and I'm twisting and I'm just kind of going in and letting all these little bushy things but you got to make sure if you got too much paint on your brush you've got to be able to see these bristles the bristles are leaves so if you're putting too much paint on and you're not um, getting these little bushy things then too much paint probably I don't have any water really added to the paint at this point. And then I just went in and filled all that in with a circular brush stroke. It's, it looks a little different on my plate, but you get it. All right. So I'm gonna use my tiny brush for the shuttlecock and I'm gonna use my hand so the four fingers that I kind of have splayed out it's almost can you see how my hand could look a little bit like it could be a little bit like a shuttlecock shape and it's gonna be about the size of my hand too because you want maybe a little smaller that might be uh, you want this one up here to be much bigger and then we're gonna do like a tiny one back here in the distance um, but we're going to start with four lines like this. So uh, I'm going to use my tiny brush and I'm just going to have some white paint. Now to start, I want to go in and do, oh, I'm going to start the bottom of it like right here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to do this shape that's like, like a half circle basically. This is gonna be the orange bottom of the shuttlecock. And as far as like how big to make this, oh, it's bigger than my thumb, but not much. And again, there's some green shining through here, but it's okay because this is gonna get covered up with orange. The reason I'm doing white first is just because orange is not strong enough on its own to cover up this dark green. So consider this like a layer of primer. Sorry, to do it. Okay, so we're gonna come in and I'm taking a tiny brush. And what I'm doing, remember this. So we're gonna, I'm gonna do these two on the outside. So from the corner, this is going all the way up into the tree line. If you want like a measurement on that, I don't know. If you have my kit, let's see. 
That's like a little bit longer than the plastic handle. If that gives you an idea of a measurement. Because everybody's got that same brush. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over here and I'm going to do, again, one on this outside. And I just want them to be kind of, doesn't have to be perfect, but somewhat evenly spaced. That's a little taller. And I'll go in and fill this one in a little bit better. So again, I'm a fan of getting the line in and you can always go back and clean it up. When I see people have struggles getting a, a line, it's because they're nervous to go in and do it in one stroke. So they come in and do like, if you're doing that, you're going to have a really hard time getting a fluid, fluid line. It's better to just trust it coming in and then I'm going to do one more line right in here. And I'll go in and just kind of clean those up once you've got it pretty good. Now, your paint, Brad and Katie, your paint's going to be a little drier than mine is because I've, I'm not zipping through it, but see how it's okay if some of these get a little, a little thicker. Okay, I'm going to make that one a little thicker. So you have this basic shape and now is when there'll be probably a lot of little intricacies that you'll probably want to pause and, and rewind. But the gist of it is at the top here, actually right down here at the bottom first, let's go in and just skip a little space. And I want you to go in with a line that just comes right across. And of course, only one person on the team is going to be doing the big shuttlecock. When it comes to the little one, you really can't get as intricate as we're getting with this one. It's just gonna kind of be more of like a shape in the distance. So we put this here, and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put a V shape in between each one of those. So it was a V shape, but then when you stand back, it kind of looks like little M's. So I do that along the top. I'm just rinsing my brush off because I'm picking up this dark paint from behind there. I'm getting a little bit more white paint. And I'm going to come in, and so we did the arrow coming down here. I'm going to do the opposite right in here. So it's going to be like a little upward arrow. And then you're going to go in and you're going to do a line straight down the middle of each of these segments. Are we seeing it? Looks like a shuttlecock. All right, so that's kind of just that basic shape there. And then once you get these segments chopped up, somebody texted me, is that what's going on? We don't know what's happening with the phone. All right, so still have the tiny brush. And at this point, I'm gonna go in and every other one, so I've, I've broken these up into these little segments. Every other one, I'm gonna paint white. Skip one, one over here, and again, my paint's wet back there, but it's kind of adding some nice little interesting shadows, so that's what you call it. It's a happy accident, as Bobby would say. So I just am filling in, I started over here, white, 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 
Now I have three segments left that I'm going to fill in with a gray color. So gray, just get yourself a little bit of white and a little bit of black. And I'm just using a, such a small amount of paint. I mean, you could kind of, it's almost like a, it's not quite a 50-50 ratio on this because the black's pretty strong. I just took a little bit of white and then maybe just like. But you want it dark enough that it's going to be a really good contrast to this. So now I'm going in in these sections and I'm filling these in with gray. And the thing that I like to note about this is when you do that, I kind of go in and I cover up that original white outline on the gray segments. So like this, I would cover that up with gray. Brad Jackson said the cops called and his chair fell in an air vent. What? Well, no one knows what it means. Barb <laughs> says, what's going on over there? Chair. I can figure like if he had his chair close to an air vent, maybe his, the leg of his chair fell down. Oh, yeah, that's what <laughs> it sounds like. <laughs> they are having a night over there. This is what our Saturday nights have turned into, you guys. Brad's getting stuck in the air vent. <laughs> Well, they'll have to rewind and <laughs> watch those. Okay. And again, these are usually a little brighter white. I'm kind of liking that effect that it's doing, having that green back there. But you can always let that dry and then hit it with some bright white. It's not dry enough yet, though. Keep trying it. can't stop what is that about all right this is when this is what happens so paint is too wet I can't do anything about it it makes me frustrated I want to keep going in and just mess with it but it's just not going to do anything so I need to just let that sit and chill I'm going to come in I'm going to make a tiny one over here hopefully this dries some and we're going to come back and hit this with some orange Maybe brighten up a couple highlights and we'll have ourselves a really big Nelson painting. If anybody wants, this is for sale after the class. I, I don't have room for it on the, on the walls. And I don't know how much it's for sale for either. So. Teddy moved the vent cover and he didn't realize it. Mm, I can picture it now. <laughs> it sounds pretty comical. Barb says the shuttlecock looks awesome from here. Mm. Thank you. Those are the things, is that all of these paintings, if you were to get up here with like a magnifying glass, there's imperfections, but it doesn't matter. So when you paint, just don't let that hold you up. All right, let's do another one over here. Just a smaller guy or girl. So I'm going to come in and just set this back. Uh, I actually did this with some friends on a Zoom uh, virtual class. So we do that too. We do these live videos, but if you want us to to have us with a group um, and on Zoom, it's like I can actually see your painting and kind of give you advice real time. One of the things that happened was someone put their shuttlecock a little bit too far into the tree line. So don't do that. Just... Make sure it's up here in your yard. And we also did a single version in the class. So, and we, we used this size canvas, but did this picture on it. So many variations. All right, so again, you can't, I mean, you can try to get all these little intricate details in there, but you don't really have to. You can just go in and so get your get your four lines in and you'll see you just don't have the kind of room like you did on the other one 
So if you just go in and make sure that you've got your top and you're not going to, you know, it's going to be like, you got a lot less room going on in here, but you can still have your three little segments. What about the cops? What was going on there? Cops called because I guess someone left their garage doors open and lights on at the office. Oh, I thought you meant it. Oh, yeah. and I'm like, if it wasn't one of you, get out of the house now. <laughs> well, who says we can't have some excitement? What did I do there? Oh, I painted one of the light sections gray. Okay, so that's good enough for that. So unless you've got a very tiny, tiny brush, I'm gonna come in and let's make, I'm taking a little bit of yellow. And some red, ketchup and mustard. Again, the red's really strong, but it's okay to have a real nice bright orange on here. So I'm just coming in and filling that in orange. And I'm blowing up. Is this some massive group message out there? Mm, I can't imagine. <laughs> okay. All right, so we got a little orange there. One of the little grand finales that I like to do is, once you have your orange on here, take just a little bit of brown on your brush and maybe come in like right down in here. And if your paint's still wet, all you have to do is just kind of run it It'll sort of blend in. If you want some more blending, you can go in and kind of use your, your finger to add a little shadow. I'm going to do that over here. And I'm just like, this is the, the shadow side is like whichever part's closer to the ground. So if this is leaning this way, I'm putting the shadow here. If this one's leaning this way, so the shadow's here. Uh, pretty subtle effect, just adding that little shadow. And then you can go in with a little bit of white and put a little white spot right here. And again, paint's wet. Just kind of go in and touch it with your finger. Okay. I'm going to try one more time. And it's still... So what? I like the shuttlecock though. I think it's fine. But do you see, this is where I'm like, do you see how when I, when I stroke like that, it just scrapes the paint off the top. So that's why you have to stop, stop messing with it and just let it. Okay. I'm done. I'm, I'm going to do it for real this time. Stop touching it. Still looks good. I could dry. I could brighten it up, but all right. So that is the gist one more thing. This is the, the medium brush. I'm going to go in with just some brown because it's pretty forgiving and it's I'm not going to have a ton of paint. But just come in kind of right underneath this. Keep your shadow kind of horizontal. And you can just add a little shadow underneath the shuttlecock there. And let's do a little something. So this is just a little bit of brown, but and I'm not using very much paint. And again, you can kind of just all right. 
Okay. And you just, the hardest part is to know when to, when to call it. So, there we go. We've got a double. This is a, let's see, 16 by 40 are the dimensions on this picture. Let's start the bidding at $40. So, mm -hmm. I usually sell all of my, my duplicate pictures, my 16 by 20s are usually $20 at the Dusted Attic. So since this is two canvases, that's a pretty good price. So I've got a stack of paintings over in the corner. I would get rid of any of them. We'll have another, we'll have another painting sale pretty soon, so. All right, well thank you everyone for painting. That was fun. Uh, happy Saturday. Uh, let's see. We'll be back, I think on Wednesday. I don't know exactly what I'm painting yet, but I will post it. So thank you. And then, yeah, we will follow up. I know some of the people will be watching this later. So just remember as you're watching it, you can always reach out to me with personal questions if you've got the, the kit out there. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good Saturday.